Good evening. I'm David Swotek, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Los Angeles Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert will soon be placed on injured reserve after receiving season-ending surgery for a fractured index finger today. Herbert injured his index finger on Sunday during the second quarter against the Denver Broncos. With Herbert out, the backup quarterback Easton Stick will now start for the Chargers. Jessica Cootie will be joining the show tonight live from Tampa. The Nebraska volleyball team punched their ticket to the semifinals for the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship after their victory against Arkansas on Saturday. The Huskers will face Pittsburgh this Thursday in Tampa, Florida. Finally, let's take a look at some men's college basketball games going on tonight, all games starting at 6 p.m. Hofstra is hitting the road to face against number 21 Duke. The Georgia Southern Eagles fly up north for their game against number 12 Tennessee, and Maryland is hosting their game tonight against Alcorn State. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. If you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness, if so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is the first hour of Sports Nightly, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Lexi Rodriguez sails the serve. Oh, pass by head over that shot back by Jackson. Off the block control by Arkansas. Outside set, swing by head, blocked! Set to big red! Marcus comes right of a hesitation move off the screen from Mast. Draws a double, kicks it to Mast. Extra pass, Gary, extra pass. Eli Rice got the three. Eli Rice got the three. Six of those trios by Nebraska in the first half, 29-27. Served by Gillen. Bad pass, Harper. Laney has to chase it down, bumps it front left. Harper's going to take a big rip, cross court. In! Wow! That's an All-American roll shot. Coming off the bounce on the left wing, still dribbling. Passes oh out top. Tess Shilly for three. You! Betcha! Huskers have the lead! Tess Shelley hits the three! Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to our Tuesday edition of Sports Island here on the Huskers Radio Network. Hope you had a great day today. A little chilly out there today. Woo-hoo. Here's Greg's fun little fact. For you. Cole loves it when I throw fun little facts into the program. Saturday and Sunday in Lincoln, the sun set at 4.58. You know what time it set today? 4, 4.59. We're coming back up, people. How about that? Let's go. We have hit the darkest day of the year, at least from far as the sun setting Late in the day. That'll warm your heart up a little bit out there today. We got a good two hours coming up. Damon Benny, we found him. We located him. It's been a couple weeks since DB and I have talked. Really have to go back to the Iowa game when we wrapped it up on Black Friday. Get his take on all things Husker football. A lot has happened, right? (laughs) A lot has happened in the last two and a half weeks. Coaches extensions. A little bit of player movement off the roster. Some big fish maybe about to be added to the roster. We'll talk about all of it with uh, Damon coming up in a couple of minutes. As David told you, Jessica is traveling with the Husker volleyball team. They have landed in Tampa. She is en route to her hotel. She'll join us later on in the program. The team got off. I saw this on social media about 15 minutes ago. The team got off their charter flight, and there was a tunnel of fans out there. I think some, some were Husker fans, but I think some other might have been some community folks from Tampa to welcome the teams to their community for the Final Four. But a really cool scene. And what a, what a, a, that is a fun thing for anybody to go through, right? You get off a plane and, you know, you're in a different town. This, you're not in your own state. And yet you got a welcoming committee. That, that is fantastic. So kudos to whoever organized that. If it was just the Tampa Chamber of Commerce, tip of the cap. That, that is really well done. Make those student athletes feel special about being in their community for the Final Four. I got to believe tickets are going to be at a hot commodity uh, for those semifinals on Thursday night. We're, what, 48 hours away from first serve. Huskers have the first semifinal against Pitt. Two number one seeds uh, set to match up there. Pretty chalky tournament. We talked about this. On Friday with Lauren Cook West, very chalky tournament. You go back to the region finals. In the Pitt Regional, you had a one Pitt, two Louisville. Here you had a one Nebraska, three Arkansas. 
Wisconsin, you had a one Wisconsin, two Oregon. And out of Stanford, you had a one Stanford, two Texas. So really, really chalky. Texas busted through, as I predicted, Friday night. And yes, I did get two of them wrong. I picked Louisville to win the Pitt Regional. And hey, they're up 2-0, right? It was a reverse sweep for the Panthers. Uh, And I also thought maybe Oregon could not. Maybe I was wishful thinking that Oregon could beat Wisconsin. But hey, I got two of the, the four right as well. So... Um, here we go. Off to Tampa we go. Uh, media day tomorrow. Practice day tomorrow. We'll have full coverage of all that tomorrow night on the program. Jessica anchoring our coverage from down in Tampa. She was uh, oh, 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 anxious to hear, you know, what was JB's behavior like on the plane? That's, kind of, that's my, one of my first questions. I hope he behaved himself uh, down there. All right, let's talk Husker football. What a 24 hours, right? What a 24 hours. Um it has been for Husker football. And, you know, yesterday, word popping up that Dylan Rayola was back in play, the five-star quarterback coming into the, the, the fall, the number one rated quarterback in this class, been committed to Georgia since late summer. Now apparently looks like he's going to flip. He will be in Lincoln over the weekend, where I think a lot of people expect he will commit to Matt Rural in this program and sign with the Huskers a week from tomorrow on signing day. The visit for Kyle McCord, the Ohio State quarterback, is over. He is headed out of town, uh, did not commit while he was here, has not at least put it out on social. Maybe, maybe, maybe he said something to one of the Oscar coaches while he was here, but it's not been an announced on social media that he is committed. But I still think, I still think it looks good. I think it looks promising. Uh, I think, you know, he made a visit here. He's obviously very interested in Nebraska football. So his visit is over. Uh, the visit of Julian Fleming, another Buckeye, former five-star wide receiver, is going on now. He's here today. Uh, they've been cranking the music to the concourse of Memorial Stadium throughout the day today. So, uh, you know, he's been around. So that, that is still in progress. Um, there was some news from the other part of the portal. A Husker who exited last week to Monlinum did commit to Pitt. Good for Tamon. I was sorry to see him exit. I thought he started playing an awful lot late in the season. The game that Quentin Newsom could not play late in the year, Tamon started, and I thought played pretty well for the Big Red. But he he has left, and he has found a commitment and a home at Pitt. Good for him. I, I, I worry so much. I know Matt Rural was on the Pat McAfee show today, and he, he echoed these same sentiments. We have like 1,100, maybe it's up to 1,200 now, young guys in college football that have entered the portal. That's a lot. Eleven, Probably over 50% of those are not going to get another scholarship offer. So they have left a program that had a scholarship. And maybe a good number of them were being told to leave. Maybe. Uh, but there had to be a certain percentage that it's their choice to leave. Well, they're going to leave and not have a scholarship. Do, so do they continue with their education? Most of them probably won't. So the ultimate thing for college athletics is to get these young men and women degrees. So a lot of these guys that have entered the portal looking for a greener grass on the other side are not only going to find a dead pasture, but they're going to not they're going to walk themselves out of school because they're not going to have a scholarship to go to another school. So that's that makes me sad. That but you know <laughs> These, a lot of these kids are listening to the wrong people. Somebody else is in their eyes. Somebody from back home is like, you deserve better. The, the, the coaches you're playing for, and I'm not, I'm not talking about Nebraska at all here. I'm just saying this is what, what a lot of these kids hear, is that you're, you deserve better. So many people are going to still want you. Get your name out there. Leave where you are. You're going to be better off. And then they find out, man, I got some bad advice from, from – uh, Tom and Joe, my buddies from back home, told me the wrong thing. And now I'm kind of stuck in this whole thing. So that, that bothers me a little bit that that, that 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 happens. But, you know, and I'm going to talk about this with DB coming up here in a little bit. We have not seen many Huskers hit the portal. And I think that's because a lot of Nebraska student athletes, particularly in the sport of football, they know they have it pretty good here. And, and they like it here. And they like this coaching staff. And they like – Everything Nebraska offers, with it, whether it be academic services or the other things that they get them connected to, or they like the they like the NIL that they're getting here at Nebraska because it's 
pretty, you know, Coach Royal's been pretty adamant that, you know, he needs the guys. He wants everybody on the team to get a little bit, a slice of the pie. And that's been going on here at Nebraska. So I think all of that is, is speaks well for the Nebraska program. So no update on McCord. I know he's left. He was spotted at the Omaha airport this afternoon. Nothing gets by Husker fans, right? It's all there. We, we, we dig it out. We find that stuff. So he has left Lincoln uh, just waiting for him. And maybe he just wants to get back home. Think about the visit. Think about what he saw. I hope he doesn't take another visit. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll continue to monitor that as the week uh, moves on. And, again, Dylan Rayola is set to visit this weekend. A couple of other visits may be popping up for Nebraska as well. Did not mention this last night. And it wasn't – I had it in my notes. And, and Jessica and I only had an hour last night, so I didn't c- get everything covered that I really wanted to last night. But Jeff Sims has officially – Put his name in the portal and I feel bad for Jeff I, I you know it did not work out the way anybody wanted it to be by all accounts Jeff was a terrific teammate for everybody on this team he was very supportive of Heinrich and then Chubba late in the year when they got a chance to start and I think Jeff's a terrific athlete but you know he certainly had his stumbles it started right out of the gate with the turnovers in Minneapolis in week one. And then it continued in week two against Colorado before he got the ankle hurt, which took him out of play for a couple of games. And then when he got a chance again in the Maryland game, it just it just did not go well for, for Jeff. So he is officially in the portal, expected to graduate Saturday, which as a graduate student, you can transfer again and not have to sit out. So the one, you have the one-time transfer rule, and then if you do graduate, you can go to another school and not sit a year. So he is slated. He is on the list of athletes that are supposed to get their diplomas on Saturday, and I wish him nothing but the best. And, and I hope he goes somewhere. And, and, and maybe, again, I'm not a coach, but maybe Jeff's not a quarterback. Maybe Jeff needs to be a wide receiver or something else because he's a great athlete. And... Maybe he would be open to some of that. We had the McCaffrey kid here a few years ago that when he was here was pretty adamant about being a quarterback. A lot of people thought he could be a wide receiver. He went elsewhere, ended up at Rice, and had a terrific year as a wide receiver. So maybe for Jeff, maybe he's open to doing something like that. Uh, But I wish him nothing but the best. But I did miss that yesterday um, as we were going through all the other things. All right. Before I get to the break, and DB's, is he locked in? Yeah, he's already, he's locked in. So we'll get DB here in, in a minute. But I, I got to talk about the video that dropped last night about 9 o'clock. Maybe it's a little later than that. And I did a double take because I'm like, am I, am I reading the messaging right? And it, I'm sure you've all seen it now. It came out on social media last night. You had Isaac Gifford and Bryce Benhart, two guys who did walk on senior day for the Iowa game but had not yet officially announced whether they were going to come back and take advantage of a COVID year. So they are in the new training facility for Nebraska, and they're getting into those sleep pods. I think some of you have seen them. Maybe maybe you saw the video and were like, what is that thing? Well, it's a sleep pod where you're supposed to be able to get in there and accelerate your sleep patterns and all those type of things. And they're like, what are you doing? I haven't decided yet. Why don't we care? So they just kind of chit-chat back and forth and like, you coming back then? And they go, yeah, I think I am. And so then they get another shot of him walking out onto the field off the red carpet at Memorial Stadium. I thought it was really clever, really cute. And I was, I was thrilled to see that last night. I got to tell you. And as Cole said, we were just piling on everybody in college football with that video late last night after all the news from the day that Isaac Gifford and Bryce Benhart are going to come back for another year. Two starters who p- both play tremendous football for Nebraska this year coming back and we can talk about all these additions with next week's recruiting class or we can talk about these big additions from the portal and they all are very important but to keep two high caliber kids like Bryce and Isaac in the program who have performed at the Big Ten level at a pretty high level for a couple years that is ginormous that is huge to get those two kids back Uh, for one more season they know what is expected of them they know how to play football at this high level and are high character kids that you want to have in a program so that was tremendous to see that 
uh, announcement pop late last night and couldn't be happier uh, that those two young guys are going to be back for the 2024 season for Husker football. So a lot out there. There's some other updated news on the portal for some other schools that I'll get to as we make our way through the program. We got DB coming up here in a little bit. Jessica will join us in hour number two. Uh, she, again, is traveling with the Husker volleyball team. They are, had landed about an hour or so ago, and they're on their way to the hotel. She'll join us down there and tell us about uh, the trip down there today. Big day tomorrow with the press conference and the open practice for Husker volleyball. And we'll play before she left. She did record this week's edition of The Dig. And, hey, she got Lauren Cook West to come in and sit down with her. We'll play a good chunk of that for you coming up in hour number two as well. All right, 402-413-2400. I see some texts have popped in. I'll get to those coming up here in a few minutes. But when we come back, DB, the Husker analyst, will join me next. Things that impair you come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are the shape of beer and liquor bottles. Others look like cigarettes but aren't cigarettes at all. These are the things we know impair us, the things our parents warned us about. What we're not always aware of is our new prescription or the -the over-the-counter medicine we picked up just for allergies or a bad cold. See, it doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If you are impaired, driving is deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Woodhouse Buick GMC is bringing you more this holiday. With every new Buick or GMC purchase from Woodhouse, we're including three years of scheduled maintenance. That's three years of worry-free oil changes and tire rotations included in your purchase of a new Buick or GMC. And with great year-end finance and lease offers going on, you'll save even more. It's our gift to you this holiday season when you experience the difference and shop with Woodhouse Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Offer expires January. January 2nd, 2024. See dealer for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. When you're clocking out and happy hour's already started. But... You're clocking out, and happy hour's already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Move through the world in a legendary SUV from Woodhouse Cadillac. Be iconic and find your next luxury vehicle in-store or online anytime at woodhousecadillac.com. Leases starting at $539 a month for 39 months. 10,000 miles per year on the 2024 Cadillac CT5 Luxury. With approved credit, must have current Cadillac financial lease. 3,000 down plus first payment and $299 dot fee due at signing. Offer expires 1-2-2024. See dealer for details. Welcome to Sue's Frame Shop. Yes, can you frame these, please? Um, these are Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch Tickets. I know. Isn't the classic Christmas artwork on them just charming? Now, be sure not to smudge it when you frame them. But if you scratch them and enter non-winning tickets online, you could win up to $20,000. Give me those. Here's a quarter. Let's start scratching. Promotion ends January 3rd, 2024. Top prize odds vary by game. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Taman 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. 
See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Welcome back inside our Acres Broadcast Center. Acres is the Midwest premier John Deere dealer. They have solutions for every field. Real treat for us tonight. Here's the color analyst of the Huskers Radio Network, Damon Benning. Has it been, gosh, it's almost been three weeks since we called the Iowa game. Where did that time go, huh? I don't know, but if the further away I get from you, the worse I get. So it's always <laughs> good to it's always good to catch up with you. I get a little squirrely when we're apart too long, so it's good to catch up. Have you warmed up from that? It was a cold day for that one. Yeah, it was kind of deceptive too. I knew it was cool in the morning, and I get it the wind, but it was. And we've had some toughies, right? I, I remember a couple of games a year ago, and. And who was about three weeks ago that was miserable? Uh, was it Maryland, maybe? It, Maryland but, was cold, uh, and, and that, Purdue was cold, too. Yeah, yeah that one, the Iowa one kind of snuck up on us. But uh, I, I felt like, man, with about a minute to go, I had all sorts of warm fuzzies, and then real life happened. So I put that one in the rearview mirror. Well, a lot has happened with the program since then, and we wanted to get your take on that. Let's just kind of start with some of the coaching news in this thing. I, I know you've had a big man crush on Tony White. A lot of Husker fans do now as well. How about the raise and extension that he got? I'm sure you were thumbs up on that one. Yeah, that was fantastic. I, I was tickled, and, and uh, you know, the cool thing was he was just up at the high school the very next day. So he was... He was at uh, Omaha West Side, and we got a chance to, to really um, talk and, and catch up. And he's just such a – he's a good ambassador of, of young men. So, um, you know, and we at least get him for another year or two um, is fantastic. And how about and, – and he talked about this, G Sharp. He was so appreciative of Coach Rule wanting the best for him that he kept him in the loop. He said their lines of communication and the way that they talked and he would bounce ideas off a of coach rule. Like how about that for a culture, right? That, that going to your boss about other job opportunities because you feel like your boss has your best interests at heart. I, I, I it just, it, it spoke volumes to, to kind of their relationship and, and what kind of person coach white is too, because he was operating on the up and up the whole time. You use the word culture. I, I kind of want to go there next because very few Huskers have entered the portal. And yeah. you, th you would think maybe after everybody's been through a year of this staff, maybe we would have had more of an exodus. But that says a lot, doesn't it, DB, that these kids want to stay here, want to play for this program and this coaching staff? Yeah, it's been unbelievable. I've been shocked. I mean, we, people throw away or throw around a lot of money and NIL and this, that, and other. And, you know, Nebraska had a couple of guys – that could easily be getting paid to, to be in camp on Sundays that didn't ask for a dollar, right? Just loved the, the atmosphere and the culture and felt like they owed it another year. And so, you know, when guys are calling or asking around like, hey, you know, how do we make this happen together? Do we have another run in us if we come back? What's this look like? I mean, that's pretty cool. And, and I think the, the neat thing about that, Greg, is that, Trev and the athletic department and Coach Rule, they, they tried to be forward thinking. They, they, they diversified the staff. They talked about the menus, what they wanted the new facility to look like. Their best way to combat NIL and the ever-changing landscapes of, of facilities is to make it feel like home. And to make it feel like home in a lot of different capacities, from, from what guys are eating to the camaraderie to – to uh, what the staff looks like and, and how diversified it is. They, that was their answer because a lot of folks, and I was one of them, weren't in a hurry to leave home. And the more that you can make Lincoln and, and that, that, that stadium feel like home, that city, uh, the harder it is to leave. And, and they're, they're seeing some benefits from, from thinking ahead in terms of keeping guys in camp. Yesterday was an extremely busy day, a lot of news. I'm going to pick my way through it, but I'm going to kind of keep going with this culture, yeah. consistency flow. Last night we get the, the funny tweet that came out from Gifford and Ben Hart saying they're going to come back 
pretty good pieces to keep part of it, aren't there? Those two kids coming back for another year? Yeah, and gosh, you've seen it all um, in your tenure. So your Rolodex is, is, is a good one. Would you have thought to yourself the year after COVID and during the COVID year that Ben Hart would be a guy that would openly say, hey, you know what? I want to be back. I, I love Lincoln. This place is a good place for me. Like you talk about proof of concept. Uh, that was fantastic. His coach rule has said from day one to sing Ben Hart that he's a Sunday guy. And I know fans were thinking, come on. But uh, apparently, uh, he he kind of knows what he's talking about. As, as Ben Hart was, I don't know if easily, but in the discussion of most improved along that offensive line and, and getting a guy like Gifford back who just loves playing, um, an ambassador to sport, tackling leader. I mean, he has some options. And you think that at some point he'd want to get out of Lincoln? Spend a lot of time here playing a lot of football, man. To, to see a guy like that come back has been nothing short of fantastic. All right, then now let's weave into some other things as people are probably like yelling at us to get to the meat because I saved the meat for the last year. It started with Donovan Rayola. So we talked about Tony White's extension. What about Donovan Rayola and the job he has done the last couple of years of that offensive line in your eyes? Yeah, how about the forward thinking? You know, Coach Rule, and, and you were there, right, at that presser early when he said, gosh, you know what, I... He goes, I'm not buying the narrative. I'm not giving in to the fact that this isn't a good offensive line. He said, we're going to be a good offensive line. We've got talented kids. We got, we, got a, we got a plan away that accentuates their strengths. We're, we're a good offensive line. And, and I think people thought, well, you know, it's just because, you know, nephew's in the deal. And, and, you know, nephew wasn't in the deal. And Rayola uh, arguably had the most improved position group. It's either O-line or D-line for most improved from a year ago in terms of what they brought to the table. And the extension was kind of quiet, but not really. You kind of got into the, 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 the minutia, the contract, and whatever. And, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, and I, th and I believe this in my heart of hearts, G-Sharp, I don't – are the two connected? Yes, but not probably in the way that we think. I think this one was more about Donnie is a guy that earned his keep. He wanted to earn his keep. Remember, I think they went to Lincoln, Satterfield, Rule, that staff, with the intention of getting rid of Coach Riola. And after spending time with them and, and talking philosophies, they're like, ah, oh, this is a guy we've got to have. And he's proven his value over the last couple of years. And so if you fast forward over to like, let's say Dom and Dylan, it's brothers, right? And, and, and Dom and Dylan are close. And, and I think what, what Dom saw was what he's always wanted to see from people. It doesn't matter if it was another school in the Big Ten or a school in the SEC or whatever. Just be who you say you're going to be. Do what you say you're going to do. And he's watched Coach Rule do that in terms of, valuing his brother, not always doing what's popular, being a man of his word. And so you kind of sit back and you think, okay, that, they might have something going there. That's something I think we want to potentially take a look at and, and be a part of. Like I trust what's going on in Lincoln. And when you've got to give up your kiddo for three, four, five years or however long it's going to be, trust is a huge word when you're turning them over to somebody and and uh, that, that kind of got the ball rolling, and it, and it started with kind of a, a little subtle contract extension. Well, just even – and Jessica has mentioned it several times on our broadcast in the fall. A lot of coaching was going on down on the field during games from Rayola. He was doing a lot of that work for that offensive staff. So I think How about you and I always we you know we'd kind of get in our ear and we're like, hey, what's what's Coach Rayola's – like she was good at getting those little tidbits and, and – well, he was I, – I was impressed, man. And how about how those guys – remember way back when, in the offseason, those players wanted Coach Rayola back. 100%. Like, they spoke volumes, didn't they? 100%. They did. Yeah. Well, you know, you, your son is, is a legacy player about to join this Husker program. Dom is thinking the same thing. It's got to be. I mean, it's got to be emotional tie. Jessica made the comment last night on Sports Nightly. She goes, she feels like Dylan's heart kind of has been here. That his head's maybe going, ah, maybe Jordan. But that she believes his heart may be here. And that may be what it, it ends up winning out, right, in the end. And that's hard to go away with what your heart kind of wants. 
And I, I, I'm telling you, I think that's 100% spot on. Um, you know, Dom and I talk quite a bit, just father to father. And, and early on, I was picking his brain about how do you sift through the, the tough decisions of, of following in footsteps versus blazing your own trail. I would even go so far sometimes as to ask him, Greg, like, hey, what are you saying in these situations when these questions arise? And and I was literally, um, I did the same thing with Danny Noonan. I remember kind of sitting down, picking his brain. And, and Dom was so forthright about allowing Dylan to kind of blossom and be his own guy. And, and you'd know when it fit right. And, you know, just talking to him over the weekend about kind of where I was with things and, and how we felt. I think we just kind of came to this consensus. If, if you have to give something up that you care about and, and kind of turn it over to somebody, you better be turning it over to some folks that you, that you trust wholeheartedly because once they're there, they're, they're there. And I think, um, Dylan and, and Caleb have some similarities in that they, they've seen and, and, and been around a lot since they were young and it wasn't always appealing, right? Like to, to be compared or to be kind of in those shadows. And so um, while Dom cast a much larger one than I did, the, the premise is still the same for the kids, right? They want to be associated with something that they've done, not necessarily about the family lineage. And, and I think that balancing act was really, really tough. And I, and I just commend Dom and Dylan, whatever happens down the road with at least taking the time and then having the due diligence. But I, I 1000, 2000% agree with JC when she said the heart thing is tough. It is. It, it's really hard to overcome because I always tell people the heart wants what the heart wants. And you can have a lot of other things going on around you, but the heart ultimately is is the thing that keeps you alive, and it's usually the pulse of what we do. By the way, I'm, I may be at the front of the line on the Maverick Noonan fan club. I think Maverick's going to have a heck of a career. Hey, let's, I'm. <laughs> you're right with me. I, I, oh yes, yeah. He d- does need a. You know my line. Does need a babysitter. Loves playing football. He's got a super high football IQ. He's got a crazy motor, uh, and he's. Got really good bend. I'm hoping that he's he's feeling pretty good coming off of, of surgery during the season. I'm I'm really looking forward to, to to Maverick Noonan as well. All right, kind of circling back. We talked about not a lot of Huskers going into the portal. The portal's getting a lot of attention now for the intake with yeah. the Ohio State kids coming here. But it looks like Coach Rule wants to kind of leave that in a limited room, right? He doesn't want 10, 15 of those guys. Your thoughts about that philosophy? I love it. I, I love it. I, I think, you know, he's like a good grocery shopper, right? If if you want a balanced meal, he knows that his meat and potatoes have to come in house through development and, and be red shirt sophomores and, and, and red shirt juniors. And I think that's how you can continue to eat well. If you want to get a little fancy, then you go to the grocery store and you kind of supplement maybe instead of, you know, uh, plain label potatoes, you know, we you go – Idaho or, or Russet or something like that, or instead of the, your your choice, you get reserved beef, and you just supplement. You don't supplant. And I think if he can stick to that philosophy, especially from what we've seen this year, look how many guys they played and different quarterbacks and eight or nine different old linemen having to start and all the guys we saw in defense. If if you can continue that development and establish depth. Uh, then I think then I think you're cooking with some really good ingredients. I love the philosophy. All right, I'm done with the softball questions. You ready for some tough ones? Yeah, give me a toughie. Did the playoff committee get it right? No. Um, that one didn't take me too hard. I, and the reason, and maybe not for the reason you think, I think they just lacked consistency because what they did with leaving Florida State out with the injury situation was – they tried to convince us that it was about the best four. But then you see Florida State ahead of Georgia, and Georgia's not even in the top four. So I, I thought the mixed message within the mixed message was, was not good. I don't think you can leave an undefeated major conference champion out of it. I don't uh, – listen, we went to Manhattan with a hurt quarterback. We went to the Orange Bowl not knowing who was going to start a quarterback. Like, injuries and overcoming it and getting a chance to rally is part of the conversation. And I'm all for 
getting a chance to prove it on the field. Not not a lot of folks thought that we were going to, to, to Miami when we were playing and going to be competitive. And you just never know in the spirit of competition. So I felt like that was disappointing. And you know what? At the end of the day, I just didn't subscribe to the double standard. I didn't like the fact that we kind of downplayed Georgia, but when it was convenient to use Georgia as a benchmark for an Alabama signature win, it, that fit the narrative. I didn't like the fact that we, we talked about how Georgia didn't look good against Georgia Tech, even though that was a rivalry game, but we gave Alabama a mulligan. I didn't like the fact that people just assumed that the SEC couldn't be a conference that was left out, even though they were mediocre all year and had a losing record against uh, the other bowl uh, or the other playoff uh, participants this year. I just think there's a lot of of double talk with the narrative. I I absolutely don't think the committee got it right. All right. Who wins it all? Oh, boy. Oh, that is a toughie. I'm going to – will the football gods honor Michigan? Um, Michigan is probably the most complete – Washington is the most dangerous. Texas has the best chance with the wild card quarterback in yours. Milrow knows how he wants to play, so Bama will rally because of um, Saban's steadiness. Can Sark get yours? Um, I'm going to go with – I'll take Michigan, but my dark horse is Washington. Good stuff. I think their games are going to be fantastic. All right, Jessica says all she wants for Christmas is a big jar of Starburst. She figured you could handle that for her. Hey, I, I, I thought of her. You'll get a kick out of this. I, I, was, I was picking up some um, – I was in a little bit of foreign territory getting some stuff to, to make T-shirts. And uh, I was kind of wandering around, and I saw high shoes, but they were four thirty nine for a little bag. Oh. I was like, ah, I like her. Well, but not that much. Wow. I kind of left them in the store. I, I, I just didn't believe paying four thirty nine. But boy, those things are popular. Well, they are. They are. All right, my friend. Thank you. Great thoughts as always. And uh, if I don't talk to you, have a merry Christmas. Hey, you too. Anytime, bud. There he is, Damon Benning, color analyst here on the Huskers Radio Network, joining us on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Woodhouse, your trusted auto partner. Twenty brands, twenty convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying. On your terms, visit us online at woodhouse.com. All right, what do you think of that? 402-413-2400. Phone lines open. Text lines always open. Jessica will rejoin us back from Tampa next. Husker fans, this Thursday, your number one ranked Husker volleyball team is set to face Pittsburgh in the final four of the NCAA tournament. Your postseason coverage is presented by John Henry's the official plumbing, HVAC, and electrical partner of Nebraska Athletics, bringing you all the action on the Husker Radio Network. Broadcast coverage starts on Thursday at 5 with first serve at 6. Listen online or on the air. Go Big Red! Love is all around during the 2023 Subaru Share the Love event. By the end of this, our 16th year, Subaru and retailers like us will have donated over $285 million to charities such as the ASPCA, Make-A-Wish, Meals on Wheels America, and the National Park Foundation. Beardmore Subaru is proud to support Sarpy County Housing Authority during the Subaru Share the Love event. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or online at beardmoresubaru.com for more details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. 
See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. We're back inside our Huskers Broadcast Center, brought to you by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the service and equipment to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Thanks to Damon Benning for spending some time giving us his thoughts about Husker football. Pretty active couple of weeks, you think about it. We're two and a half weeks from being removed from the season finale, and so much has happened, and so much is happening. I mean, it's just you're refreshing your – X feed or wherever you're getting your your media, you, maybe there's some websites you're going to constantly to see if there's an update on anything. I've got David and Cole doing that right now to make sure I'm not missing something as the show moves along. But we appreciate DB sticking with us here on the program tonight. Um, you know, hitting with that, who's going to win the national title? Did the playoff committee get it right? Fascinating conversation there. Crypto King in our chat room says, what happens if a one-loss team wins – the playoff and Florida State wins their bowl game. Well, if I'm Florida State, I'm probably self-declaring myself the national champion. A little bit like what UCF did when Coach Frost was there. They went undefeated. They beat Auburn in that Peach Bowl to go 14 and 0, and they kind of self-proclaimed themselves. I, you know, I, I get it, and this is going to be a moot point next year when we expand the playoffs to 12. And I, I was hesitant to do that, but now I'm all for it. I mean, think about that. Next year, we're going to be coming up on the weekend where the first round's going to take place. And you're going to have four playoff games involving eight teams at four campus sites. That is going to be delicious, right? I mean, you talk about, right? If in, And there's people that have put this out there. If, if it was already this year... You would have five playing at 12 coming to play at five, 11 coming to play at six, 10 playing at seven, and eight and nine matched up against each other. And how wild that's going to be. Florida State would have a home game. Georgia would have a home game. Uh, those would be a couple of the home teams. You'd have a game like, you know, Penn State playing maybe Oregon. I mean, how, how much fun would that be this weekend? I mean, it's just going to blow the lid off of it. And think about the jockeying for position during the month of November. And who knows? Maybe Nebraska's jockeying, right? If you want to dream a little bit about Nebraska jockeying for position to be one of those 12 teams that make the playoff next November or December. Well, we can all dream a little bit, right? Um, 
how much fun that's going to be and how much attention college football is going to grab in the month of November. Because if you're a top 20 team, you're going to still have a shot. If you're in the top 20 on November the 1st, 2024, you're going to have a shot of making that playoff. You probably need to win out and have some people get beat ahead of you, but you'll have a shot. And that's going to, and just, it's just going to light up everybody around the country uh, next November. It's going to be really, really cool to, to see where that goes. But um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see where this, where this goes. But uh, interesting comments from DB about that. And it's, it's, it's created a lot of fodder. And Florida State's not happy at all about all this. Um, and who knows? They get Georgia in the Orange Bowl. And I know Andy thinks that Georgia's going to win by 40. Uh, I don't. I think Florida State's going to probably play with a bit of a chip on their shoulder in that game and to try to prove everybody wrong. So it's going to be fascinating. And so's next year. Next year will be fascinating as well. And going back, I mentioned earlier in the hour that Coach Rural was on the Pat McAfee show today. Kind of McAfee, one of the questions was, well, where, where are you at and where do you think Nebraska football under your leadership is going? And Coach Rural said, well, we believe in the next year or two that the college football world is going to have to deal with Nebraska. And, he, you know, he didn't – it wasn't braggadocious, wasn't chest-pounding, but just said, we believe what we're doing, we're on the right track to make us a factor in the college football world in the next couple of years. And I, I think he's right. I mean, I think we saw this year, we saw a team that defensively could match up. We didn't have good enough play offensively. We turned the football over way too much. And a lot of those turnovers happened at the quarterback position. And that is being addressed this week with visits from Kyle McCord and Dylan Rayola coming up this week. So there we go. 402-413-2400, the number. If you want to fire off a comment or question, again, next hour, Jessica's going to join us from Tampa. She's traveling with the Husker volleyball team that's down there for the Final Four as they will play Pitt. In semifinal number one on Thursday night at 6, pregame coverage with J.B. and Lauren starts at 5. That night, uh, press conferences, open practice sessions tomorrow. Jessica will have that coverage and join us tomorrow night on the program. Also, programming note, tomorrow night, Amy Williams in Studio Hour 1 for her weekly women's basketball show. What a win for them over the weekend. They go to East Lansing, win their league opener on the road. Nice victory for them to go pick up a, a not only a conference win, but a road conference win. That is just huge for them. They step out of the conference for the next couple of games. They'll play Southern at PBA at noon on Sunday, and then they travel to Lawrence next Wednesday night to play their last non-conference game against the Kansas Jayhawks, and then it's all conference from there on for the Husker women. Again, 402-413-2400. We're back to wrap up our one next. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. There are a lot of rates out there, and it can be tough to find the right one. Well, let's make it easy. With FNBO's special offer CD of 5.5% APY for three or seven months, you can earn more, save more, and do more. That's 5.5% annual percentage yield for three or seven months with a minimum deposit of $500 and an FNBO Premier Checking Account. Give your savings a great big boost with the Great Big Small Bank. FNBO, member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. 
It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. 402-413-2400. We did have a call wanting to know about our what is our plan for coverage of National Signing Day, which is next Wednesday, so a week from tomorrow. We will be up streaming. Jessica and I will have full coverage. Uh We'll talk to some of the players that signed that day. We'll have some Husker assistant coaches make appearances. We we believe we'll have the head coach, Matt Rural join us 7 a.m. on our YouTube stream. So our YouTube channel, a lot of you watch it, uh, whether you watch it live or you watch it the next day of, of Sports Island, that's where you're going to find it. You can find that off the Huskers.com website. That's where we will be next Wednesday, 7 a.m. We expect by 7 a.m., We'll have a handful of kids that have already signed their national uh, letter of intent by that point in time that we can show you their their video, uh, talk to some of them, and talk to their coaches about that as well. So looking forward to having that. Question on our text on are there any uh, going to be any portal additions on the defense or special teams side of the football? Don't know about special teams. Uh, Nebraska is signing a couple of kickers, including Camden Cook, Sam Cook's son, He's going to sign next week, so you're, you're adding a couple of guys through the signing period. I don't know about the portal. Defense, yeah, I think so. I, I think that, you know, uh, you're always looking for maybe a little help at linebacker or defensive line. Uh, we all know Prince Wells' brother is out there, uh, the young man who was terrific player at Florida for the Gators. He's in the portal. you got to think Nebraska's kind of checking, uh, checking him out a little bit on this thing as well. So uh, Doug in Norfolk. Uh, Texas said, I really enjoyed DB's insights as a former player. Now as a part-time coach and dad of a recruited kid, enjoyed his overall knowledge. Pleasure to listen to him. Absolutely. Totally agree. Doug, he does a great job. We had, and, and we had not talked to DB in a couple of weeks. So it's, uh, it was well worth it, our time to get him. We appreciate him carving out some time of his day to join us here on Sports Hunting. Jim in Columbus said, I've been saying for the last 10 years we should go to 12 teams, but everybody laughed at me. So here we are, 12 teams. Jim? Boom, you're spot on. You know, I think the debate was, I think people for the last probably five years have known we needed to expand, but what was the right number? Was it six? Was it eight? Was it 12? Some people think it ought to be 16. I I think 12's fine. You're going to be able to give four teams a buy so that you'll be jockeying for those precious buys. And then the other eight are going to have to play a first round game on a campus site, which I think is fabulous. I think it's going to be incredible to see that. So we'll see. I don't know that they're totally locked into 12, but I think it's going to start that way. And I hope, fingers crossed, that this is not totally controlled by ESPN. I hope multiple networks are involved in the playoff. Wow. Where'd that hour go? Terrific first hour. When we come back, we'll have a little portion of The Dig, the podcast Jessica recorded before she left with Lauren Cook-West. It's coming up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. 
See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is bringing you more this holiday season. Finishing the year with big savings on the entire model lineup during the Wrap Up the Year sales event. Save up to $13,000 off MSRP on a 2024 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Laramie 4x4 for qualified buyers. Explore all our year-end lease and finance deals at WoodhouseCDJRBellevue.com or WoodhouseChryslerJeepDodge.com. This is Woodhouse. With approved credit, tax title license, extra. When financed with Chrysler Capital, $299 dot fee to its sign Stock number BC240134. Offer expires 1231-2023. See dealer for details.
Good evening. I'm David Swotek, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. The Los Angeles Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert will soon be placed on injured reserve after receiving season-ending surgery for a fractured index finger today. Herbert injured his index finger on Sunday during the second quarter against the Denver Broncos. With Herbert out, the backup quarterback Easton Stick will now start for the Chargers. Jessica Cootie will be joining the show tonight live from Tampa. The Nebraska volleyball team punched their ticket to the semifinals for the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship after their victory against Arkansas on Saturday. The Huskers will face Pittsburgh this Thursday in Tampa, Florida. Finally, let's take a look at some men's college basketball games going on tonight. It's halftime between number 21 Duke and Hofstra. The Blue Devils are ahead at the break. Duke leads 44 to 39. The Georgia Southern Eagles are also at break for halftime against the number 12 Tennessee Volunteers. Tennessee taking charge of the half 49 to 21. And the Big Ten game tonight, Maryland hosts Alcorn State for the 10th game of their seasons. Maryland looking good. The Terrapins lead 47 to 33 at the half. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Coming up next is Hour 2 of Sports Nightly, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Lexi Rodriguez sails the serve. Oh, pass by head over that shot back by Jackson. Off the block control by Arkansas. Outside set, swing by head, blocked. Set the big run. Marcus comes right of a hesitation move off the screen from Mast. Draws a double, kicks it to Mast. Extra pass, Gary, extra pass. Eli Rice got the three. Eli Rice got the three. Six of those trios by Nebraska in the first half, 29-27. Served by Gillen. Bad pass, Harper. Laney has to chase it down, bumps it front left. Harper's going to take a big rip cross court. In! Wow! That's an All-American roll shot. Coming off the bounce on the left wing, still dribbling. Passes oh out top. Ted Shilly for three. You! Gotcha! Huskers have the lead! Dan Shelley hits the three! Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Yeah, Jessica will be joining us. They've had some bus issues, apparently. Uh, the team uh, the team and the staff, they also put, took a pep band and some cheerleaders on the, uh, on the flight down today. The team was on one bus, and kind of everybody else was on a second bus. Apparently, that bus kind of broke down, so she's a little late. She, she will be joining us, so before the hour is up, looking forward to getting her take on all of this. Might be funnier to hear JB's take on this, right? <laughs> Am I wrong, Cole? I bet he would have a great take on all this. So, uh, But they are down there in Tampa. The Huskers departed mid-afternoon. They are in Tampa. They had a great uh, welcome committee, the Tampa Bay Huskers, which I looked at their website. It's pretty good. They're really an active group down there. They were at the airport to salute the team when they got off the plane. That is so cool, right? I mean, that's awesome. 48 hours from now, we'll be uh, we'll be about in set two or maybe in the set three with the Huskers taking on the Pitt Panthers in that semifinal matchup. 402-413-2400. Can you imagine having the same job for 43 years? 43. Well, that's what John Anderson, the longtime Minnesota Golden Gopher baseball coach, has had it. Uh, They have announced that this coming season, the 2024 season for Gopher Baseball, will be his last. Yeah, I guess John Bader's like 30. Kent Kent Kent's like at 50, but Kent kind of bounced around a little bit. But John has been the baseball coach for the Minnesota Golden Gophers since uh, for 43 years. They announced this afternoon that this will be his last season on the bench. There's been talk about Coach Anderson hanging it up several different times over the last 10 years since we joined the league, but... Uh, what a legend in college baseball. And well-respected, too. I know Coach Erstad really respected him. Coach Bolt has a lot of admiration for John Anderson as well. But that's pretty amazing that uh, he is hanging it up after the 2024 season. Gophers had a really good team. Was it 18? 2018, 2019, they got to the Super Regionals. Got beat by Oregon State in the Supers. They won a regional, got to the Supers, could not quite knock the, the door down to get to the College World Series in Omaha. But he is... Really a legend in college baseball, but that was announced earlier today. Also, uh, we're talking in hour one about all of the um, 
Transfer Portal News. Kyle McCord's visit is over. He's headed back home to Columbus, back to Columbus. Has not pulled the trigger yet for Nebraska. I think everything went well. I think Nebraska feels like they're in a good spot with him, but we're keeping an eye on all the social media channels to see if something maybe pops tonight about him. Julian Fleming, the wide receiver from the Buckeyes, is on campus today. In fact, they've had the speakers blaring. Did they turn him off, Cole? I, th- I think the, vi- the visit may be over. They've shut the speakers off. No word from him yet. And it is confirmed Dylan Rayola will be here this weekend. And all signs point that he's going to commit to ne- decommit from Georgia, commit to Nebraska, and sign next Wednesday on signing day. Wisconsin has found their new quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke, who's been at Miami playing for the Hurricanes, is transferring to Madison to be a Badger. So he will take over for Mordecai, who played his one year after transferring from SMU. So Luke Fickle has found his quarterback. We will play the Badgers next year. I know some of these, I know you haven't looked at the schedule yet, some of them uh, may not be locked in there, but um, Van Dyke now is Wisconsin's quarterback. So they found their guy out of the portal earlier today. Also, a name to keep an eye on in the portal is Caden Green. Caden Green is a big old offensive lineman. Started some games for the Oklahoma Sooners this year. Coming out of high school, Nebraska was in and came really close to landing Caden Green. He's entered the portal. So it might be a name to keep an eye on uh, moving forward. All right, coming up this hour, Jessica will join us later on in the hour from Tampa. We'll hear all about the escapades of the bus ride. Looking forward to that as well. And we're going to hear part of the dig. In fact, we're going to slip out of here, take a quick break, and come back and play you part of the dig that Jessica recorded before she left with Lauren Cook West, Oscar analyst. Uh, Get a lot of that. It's now posted, but we'll play you a snippet of that coming up here in just a little bit. Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. 402-413-2400. Com. 402-413-2400. That's the number if you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text. We're back with part of the dig next. Both farmers and Division One athletes are alike in that every year, every season presents a new opportunity. That is nothing new. Aurora Cooperative does what they always do, embrace new opportunities. They focus on their roots and continue to stand strong with their farmer owners. These core beliefs are much like those of committed Husker athletes. Aurora Cooperative relies on their value of a strong work ethic to get any job done for their producers. When you choose Aurora Cooperative, you're choosing a winning team that's dedicated to the success of our local farmers. Go Big Red and go Aurora Cooperative. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. When you're clocking out and happy hours already started. But. You're clocking out and happy hours already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome to Sue's Frame Shop. Yes, can you frame these, please? Um, these are Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch tickets. I know. Isn't the classic Christmas artwork on them just charming? Now, be sure not to smudge it when you frame them. But if you scratch them and enter non-winning tickets online, you could win up to $20,000. Give me those. Here's a quarter. Let's start scratching. Promotion ends January 3rd, 2024. Top prize odds vary by game. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Cow chip throwing. Or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. 
Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at CenexHometownThrowdown.com. Cenex, powered locally. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Drive with purpose and arrive in style when you purchase your next vehicle at Woodhouse Chevy. With advanced capabilities and safety features, the Chevy lineup puts you in a position to upgrade your ride and keep moving with confidence. Choose from a variety of models equipped with a spacious, detail-focused interior and distinctively modern exterior. Purchasing your next vehicle at Woodhouse Chevy is an easy choice. Shop our current offers and inventory today and find new roads in-store or online with Woodhouse Chevy. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the service and equipment to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. I put that pause in there for effect. That's what that, that's what that pause was. Did it, did it work? I don't know. Losing, I'm losing, losing it here. I need Jessica to get me back on track. She's going to join us soon. She's getting to her room in Tampa now. They have arrived. So the, the broken bus... I can't wait to hear this story. And again, I think I might want to hear from JB instead of Jessica. I can have more, more color to it coming from JB, but we'll get Jessica's take on that here in just a little bit. Before Jessica departed for Tampa in the Final Four, which is on Friday on Thursday at 6, 5 o'clock pregame coverage here on the network, she sat down for this week's edition of The Dig, which has been a highly popular podcast that we just started back in August. I think people have loved that, and why not – with this team that everybody has fallen in love with. And this week, a special guest because Lauren Cook West was able to join her for a conversation. It is a great listen. We're going to play you now part of that. Okay, so one of the things I wanted you to kind of talk about, you were talking about the site out percentage during the last match. Can you take us through that, why it's important, and, and what you're looking for in that, and just break that down for us? So your site out percentage is how you're doing in serve receive. So it's all based off of your mainly it shows how well you're passing. If you're passing well, your setter's able to run the offense. If she's able to run the offense, then you're usually able to get a kill in those situations. So side out percentage is, is what, and I'm not sure the exact formula or equation that goes into calculating that number, um, but it's, it's how you're doing in serve receive. Mm. So the goal is for Nebraska is 65% or higher. So usually you see Nebraska anywhere from like 67 67 percent to about 74 that's kind of where they most matches this season it's it's rare that they go below 65 although they were in i believe in the 50s against arkansas at mm -hmm. one point uh and then sometimes you'll see them in in the 80s in the high 80s and that's also rare but i think maybe against stanford we were in the 80s there, there's been a couple matches where that number has been pretty high but 65 percent or higher is the goal and so y you get to that goal by, again, passing well in serve-receive, letting Bergen run the offense, and then getting a kill. So it's, it's how quick you get the ball back after you lose the ball. Okay, fascinating. Love it. Okay, Pitt. Let's talk about Pittsburgh. What have you seen in them? What's the matchup going to look like for Nebraska? I, I'll be honest. I haven't watched a lot of Pittsburgh yet. It was, I was just trying to make it through this <laughs> yeah, weekend, Jessica. I feel you, I feel you. And I'll, I'll look at Pitt probably tomorrow. But what, from what I do remember, and they have a lot of players, if people remember... Over the past few years playing Pitt, uh, they'll see a lot of the same faces uh, that they saw. But they're a well-coached team. They try to run really fast when they're in system. They, their setters fire it to the, fire it to the pin. Um, you're going to see a lot of holes in the block if, if they are passing well and they're in system. 
it's tough for opposing teams to close the block and, and get in front of their attackers. And they're just scrappy. They play, they're, they're, there'll be bodies all over the floor trying to keep the ball up. And I think that frustrates opposing teams uh, because they, they make, they're similar to Nebraska. They make plays that you don't expect them to make. But I, w w with this matchup, Nebraska is one of the best defensive teams in the country. Pitt is one of the best offensive teams hmm. in the country. So you're getting defense versus offense. And it, who, who can play that better? I, we'll find out Thursday. But I think, again, it all comes back to serving and passing. We talk about that all the time. It's If Nebraska can serve tough and pull them out of system, it will slow down their fast-paced offense and some of their big-time attackers. And we'll have more time to put up our block and D. And then also, if we pass well, that gives Bergen a chance to really do her thing and set up the offense and try and get around that big, dynamic pit block. So when you talk about you know being aggressive, at the serv service line, is that something that maybe changes throughout a match that, hey, we're going to do this this time around and this, maybe it kind of fluctuates throughout a match depending on how it's going or is it something, hey, we're going to do this, this is what we're going to do and we're going to stick with it throughout the match? It's constantly changing and it's, I'm glad you asked this. This is a great question because the beginning of or prior to the match, Nebraska scouts and they have a plan for who they're going to go after for serving targets. So they have a, maybe one, two, maximum three passers that they're going to target, start off targeting. And, but as the match goes on, that definitely can change because maybe you have someone who's passing nails, passing perfect, and, okay, we need to find a different serving. We need to go away from them, find someone else, and try and break them down instead. So they, Nebraska starts with a plan of who they're going to target from the service line, and then that definitely can change. Now, it may stay the same, from you know what they scouted and we may see that the whole match or it it does change and it does fluctuate and you see Nebraska targeting different servers but at every time a server goes back to serve that's what coach cook is putting behind his clipboard he's giving them a serving zone and trying to get them to serve to that zone or that player uh, based on what he's scouted and and what the stats that he's being given throughout the match and that's what he feels like is the the weakest passer or the best serving target for Nebraska and then you may see him tell the servers to serve in a short serve or to serve we call it yo-yo serving serve in a deep serve so Lexi Rodriguez she does this often she'll do some short serves and she'll do some deep serves so you'll see she's trying to throw off those passers trying to get them to move maybe they're not expecting that short serve to come over you also may see at times where let's take Harper for example, Harper Murray, she's really sticking her serve, it's barely going over the top of the tape, you know, she's driving that ball. Well, maybe it's 24-24 in, you know, the fourth set, and you need her to just cupcake that serve over. And I'm not saying, you know, give them a free ball, but maybe she takes a little off of that serve just to try and get it over and in, so we're not giving the opposing team a free point. So there's certain situations and certain things that play out that does affect the serving strategy, but... Nebraska does try to go in with a game plan and they'll try to stick to it, but it does change. Oh, great perspective. How much of it at this point, the breakdown would you say is scouting and having a game plan for the opposing team and just doing what Nebraska does? It's, I would say it's probably 50-50. Mm -hmm. Nebraska puts a lot of work into scouting the opponent and having a game plan and doing things in certain rotations, whether it's blocking or defensive scheming. It's there's there's a plan for every single rotation and what Nebraska is going to be doing. But a lot of it also comes back on the Huskers' side of the net. I mean, you have to play clean volleyball. You have to serve and pass. You have to play low air. It, it's just there's so much you can control on your side and then so much that you can try and control from the other side. It's I, I think it's a good blend of both. Now, there's times where maybe it's, you're, you're doing a lot of scheming or committing with the block. And, I mean, you, you do what you can and you try and slow the opposing team down and you try and shut them down. But there's also times where, you know, you're in control of passing and Bergen's having to make a decision and, and that attacker's having to go up and play low air. And instead of maybe, you know, swinging as hard as they can, trying to get a big kill, maybe they have to be strategic about where they place that ball because Nebraska can't afford to make any more air. So it's, I would say it's a... It's a combination of yeah. both. It's, yeah. it's on, 
yeah. At the yeah, end of no, the day. I mean, it makes sense. I just wasn't sure if there was like, okay, we've done things really well, so that's what we do, but I just wasn't sure how much they, they do dive into that. Yeah. Um, I also had to get your perspective on this. Did you see Emily Eamon's tweet asking Husker fans who they're rooting for in the <laughs> Wisconsin-Texas match? I did, and I, did you read some of the replies? Yes, it was <laughs> hilarious. I also voted to see what the results were. Yeah. There's well, almost 10,000 votes. I was shocked. Did you see? No. What were the, what? Share with us. Sixty-five percent voted for Texas. They would be cheering for Texas over Wisconsin. I was kind of surprised by that. I I could see that, and the only reason why is Texas may be a little easier to. Both teams are are really good, but te it may be a little easier to beat Texas than it would be Wisconsin. <laughs> also, th I mean, if we do make it to the national championship match, and so does Wisconsin, there's another example of I think Greg and I were talking about this of another two more teams that are playing for the third time this season. So we had Arkansas and Kentucky playing for the third time this season. We had Wisconsin and Penn State playing for the third time this season. I mean, these are in like regional finals or the final four where you have these matchups that are happening for the third time so far this season. So Nebraska, Wisconsin would be that case again if, if they do both make it to, to Sunday, but it's tough to play a team yeah, it was three funny. times. It was funny because a lot of people were like, What's the third choice? Yeah. <laughs> Can <laughs> like, we pick the lesser else? of two evils, I, I feel know. like, for Husker fans. The two rivals. I, I mean, just this, this matchup that, you know, you have Wisconsin and Texas on the other side and Pitt and Nebraska and all of the matches, especially once you got into the, to the regional semifinals, were all on TV. Just the way that this sport has grown, uh, how much pride you take in that? How, how special is it for you to see just where, where volleyball has been? And, and it all got kicked off with the volleyball day in Nebraska and then records just continue to, to fall throughout the season. But just again, the, the hype surrounding this final four, how special is that for you? It's really special because at one point I was a part of all of this and to see this sport continue to grow, a sport that I'm very passionate about. And it's not just volleyball, but I feel like this is helping women's sports in general just grow and people are becoming more aware and are more supportive of women's sports. I, it, it's just, it's special that I, you know, was, I'm able to say, yeah, one, you know, one day in the past, I was a part of that. Or at one point in the past, I was a part of that. And now I just get to see it continue to grow. And, and these players, you know, with NIL deals and, and um, just the amount of fans, I think Nebraska helped sell out every single match. They away match they played in this season. So it, it's, it's growing it's people are more aware of what's of women's sports and, and the sport of volleyball i think high school volleyball is now the top uh women's sports in in the high school world or at the high school level and now you're having pro teams come to the united states whereas you know back when i was playing you had to go overseas mm -hmm. to play professional volleyball and so there's so many more opportunities so many just unique things happening and it, it, yeah, I'm, I feel I'm proud. I'm. It, it's really cool to see. I don't know if you can put it into words, but it's just it's special and it means a lot. And I, a lot of people have been fighting for this for a really long time. So it's just beautiful to see all of that kind of come full circle now. It's awesome. One of the episodes earlier, I was joking. I think it was right after the Wisconsin win, and I don't know if it was Lindsay or Jordan that was here and was talking about when Coach Cook ran into the student section and he put on the cowboy <laughs> hat and just some of the fun that he's been having this year. They're like, yeah, he would have never done that with us. Mm -hmm. But just how have you seen him continue to, to grow and evolve and to where the kind of coach that he is today that allows him to still be the best in the country? It just that sustained success is really hard to do. And uh, not a lot of coaches can have that and can say that. And so you have to evolve right throughout time. How have you seen that change for him to where he is and, and he's still at the top of his game now? Well, he's definitely soft now. <laughs> he's, and he'll admit it. He knows he's soft and he's softened up over the years. He, he used to not be like that. But he puts a lot of t time and effort into off-season development and how he can be a better coach and what he needs to do and trying to learn He'll, he'll go out and watch diff other coaches coach. He'll watch practices at different, you know, he'll go watch Team USA and Karch Cry and, and those players and coaches train and he'll try and learn from them. And so he's constantly trying to better himself. And I think that's what sets him apart and helps him stay at, at the level that he's at because he's always wanting to learn. He's never satisfied with where he's at. And he, under, I think he understands that the girls that he's coaching now, he can't be how he was, you know, 10, 15 years ago, that he has to 
work on these connections and develop these connections and be a little softer with them. And it's just the change in, in the generations and, and the change in volleyball and the culture and what players need now is different than what they needed, you know, 10 or 15 mm -hmm. years ago. And he understands that and he's adapted to that. And the, I, I've said this before and he, his lock screen on his phone, you would think it would be, you know, of his granddaughter or his, his horses, you know, something he's really passionate about. It's him and Harper Murray. It's a selfie of him and Harper. And I, these players are really like his daughters. I mean, they're a part of his family and he cares about them, not just on the court, but off the court as well. And I think that's also helped them become so successful in such a tight knit group because it's not just volleyball for him or for them. It's, it's so much more than that. And it's so much bigger than that. And it's just really special to see some of the bonds that he has with this team and, and the players and then his coaching staff. I mean, everyone respects one another. Everyone gets along. It's, it's Jalen and Kelly just signed contract mm -hmm. extensions. That's huge news. It's, it's, yeah, it's really, it's really cool to see him, but he's, he's constantly evolving, constantly trying to learn and he's never satisfied with where he's at. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Jalen and, and Kelly, how good is this coaching staff? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a joke with you. I saw Jalen after the um, Georgia Tech match. They had to go down and scout for the Arkansas match uh -huh. or Arkansas Kentucky match. And I see Jalen leaving the office because I was up in the office after we finished our post game. And he grabs a water, his clipboard, and then about a five pound bag of Skittles. <laughs> and, and I was joking with Coach Cook. I'm like, he, if that doesn't show you how young they are, I mean, can you imagine Coach Cook carrying a, a five-pound bag of Skittles <laughs> down to, to go scout? It, that's, they're just, they're young, they're free, they have fun. And I think it's a perfect balance for Coach Cook because Kaylin, or Kelly and Jalen are so young and they bring just a different perspective and a different eye to the game. And they both played and they both understand, you know, what you need as a player, but also what you need as a coach and a coaching staff. And I, I just think it's a beautiful balance between you know the seniority of coach cook and then the just how young kelly and jalen are and and the new experience that they bring and i think they keep him young too i mean coach cook's getting up there in age and <laughs> so they you know they help him with with social media and you know learning the lingo and i they also are huge they're so instrumental in recruiting and jalen especially i mean they've brought in some of the top recruits in the top recruiting classes in the country and they continue to do that and I just think because Kelly and Jalen are younger they they know how and they were players they know how to relate to the the recruits they know how to relate to the parents the families and uh, it's just yeah it's a beautiful balance and uh, it's huge news that they're sticking around because a lot of coaches will be having to find a new you know they'll have an assistant leaving after the, the season or moving on to get a head coaching job. And the fact that you have two assistants who could go to the next level, I mean, Jalen's probably ready to be a head coach, but they want to stay here and, and they want to continue to, to coach for Nebraska. That speaks volumes. And there's part of this week's dig with Lauren Cook West. The full podcast is out on our plot, podcast platforms. Again, it's brought to you by our great friends at Emeritus. Well, she has arrived. Safe and sound, broken bus and all. Jessica Cootie has made it to her destination in Tampa, Florida. I'm glad you're safe. Finally. we Yeah, we had some bus issues. The team was all fine, all good. There was two different buses, one for the team and then one for the band and the cheer and, and the, a little bit of the staff. And our bus is the one that broke down, and so we were waiting on that for a while, and then we – got off a bus and uh, where we, we thought we were dropping off at the hotel. And then they're like, Oh yeah, we're having issues again. So I think we got on the Texas band bus. So um, that was interesting, but we're finally here and we made it. And I think JB was well behaved. He was sitting in the band section in the, in the plane and hang out with the Piccolo players. And I believe he posted a picture of it. So I actually didn't hear him, which I was surprised. I didn't hear his voice throughout the flight, but I, I have spoken to JB. He's great. He's, um, you know, typical JB. He's ready to go. There's a joke in here about Texas bandwagon. <laughs> I mean, I, I won't no. go there. So Texas, the Texas team flight got there right after we did when we were waiting on our bus, our team had left the Huskers had left, but we were waiting around for the bus and there is the Texas flight. And I asked somebody, I was like, would it be appropriate to do the horns down as they land? <laughs> like, 
can we do that? And they, they I, I refrained myself, but yeah. Tell me about I'm definitely this, not on the bandwagon. Tell me about this reception at the airport. That was cool. I guess they, they did it for um, every team that got there, but there were some Husker fans there. I mean, they, there were some Husker signs that some of the, it was like teams, I think it was like young volleyball teams from the area, and they, they had this awesome kind of welcome, rolled out the red carpet, and so there was a, a bunch of different ages of, of, of young girls there, but there were absolutely some, some Nebraska signs. And they, I was speaking to Izzy, who's with the digital media team, and she said that one of them was real giddy, like almost on the borderline of getting emotional tears when she met Merritt Beeson. And so there was, but there's some media there. And then they had some guy that's like in charge of some kind of, I don't know, tr commission or something here in Tampa. And then they had like a band with some, some, um, drums going and they were handing out oranges but yeah it was a cool reception but you know welcome to the final four right this is kind of the things that they do when you you make it to this far they roll out the red carpet for you and it's it's really neat experience and it was cool for the team and uh, really cool i think too for those young volleyball players those young girls to get to see that and and you know we've, we've talked all season long about the impact that this team is making on so many young girls and here it is again, and, and these young girls in Florida that were, you know, screaming and yelling and cheering for the Huskers. So it was it was really cool and really special. But, yeah, it's all part of the, you know, kind of hoopla that goes into when you make it to a Final Four for whatever sport it is. If you're making it to a big bowl game, they do this kind of stuff. If you're making it to a Final Four in basketball, they do this kind of stuff. And so certainly it's awesome to see that the volleyball team gets to get this treatment too. Well, yeah, kudos to the folks in Tampa. You're right. They probably do it in other cities as well. Nebraska has been to Final Fours in Kansas City and Omaha where they bus, so they don't get that kind of off-the-plane reception. But good for the Tampa Sports Commission or Chamber of Commerce, whoever put that on. That's a nice little touch to make teams feel like they're really welcome. And it's an important event because it is. It's, a, it's the pinnacle of the sport to make it to the Final Four. What, I guess you had some pet band people and some cheerleaders on your flight as well that will be down there to support the Oscars? Yeah, and I, I'm not sure which if there's a mascot here or not, but uh, yeah, there there is definitely the band, the cheer. I'm assuming some palm, but they get to travel and they'll have their own little section. And it's really neat. I mean, I I, I have not been to a volleyball final four, but I have been to a couple of basketball final fours. And you know, just with the NCAA tournament, it's really cool how this goes, where you have different kind of sections of the fans but then you have the different band section and the cheers and it's it's just it's really neat i'm i'm i cannot wait to take it in for the volleyball experience but you know i have heard that our allotment of tickets for the husker end of things sold out pretty quick so they were pretty pretty uh sparse and i can only imagine i we're gonna do a piece i think Similar to maybe, maybe not quite exactly like it, but similar to what we did when we were in Ireland and going around talking on the streets to, and try to find some Husker fans. And you told me there was a Nebraska street down here close to the arena. And I know there's a lot of fan gatherings. So we're going to, we're going to try to seek out some fans, but I, I don't think it'll be hard to find Husker fans down here in Tampa. No, I don't think so either. I think some flights have been full uh, coming out of Omaha, even today, a lot more tomorrow. So tomorrow, the team, what has the mandatory practice and then media sessions, right, at the arena? Yeah, yeah. so they'll, they'll get up and they'll – it's an open practice. And so all the teams on tomorrow will have an open practice. I believe it's for 50 minutes at the arena. They'll go and do some availability and, and do all the – you know, the cool videos that they do on the ESPN broadcast for a lot of these game broadcasts that they do, especially at the end of the season for the Final Four and all of that. Um, they'll go and do all the ESPN type stuff. They'll meet with the media, they'll have press conferences. So yeah, uh, kind of tomorrow's the big, there's a lot going on and, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have lots of coverage from that tomorrow too. And, and try to get some interviews. We'll get multiple interviews to air tomorrow night, but you know, I just, I, I, I know we've talked about it all throughout the season, but just like the demeanor of this team, you know, and I, I like the approach that you've seen just, I mean, throughout the season for sure, but even, on a day like today, traveling here and, and all of that, just they, they seem loose. They're having fun. They're having fun with each other. There was even some talk, by the way, on the plane, really up and down the aisles about the quarterback situation that's going on. <laughs> so uh, I know uh, even the band members, the cheer folk, the staff, 
even the volleyball players were talking about it too. So I know people keeping an eye, very close eye on what's going on with that quarterback situation. But, you know, just, I, I just, I love this team's just got a great feel. The, the camaraderie is so great. And, and when you want to do something special, that's just, it's, it's vital. You have to have that chemistry, that camaraderie, the love for each other. And this team absolutely has it. And, and you saw it today and, I know they're excited, and I, I'm just – I cannot wait to see how this team performs on this stage because they have always, this entire year, been at their very best on the biggest stage and the brightest lights, and I have no doubt in my mind they're going to bring it again. Kind of wish there was somebody brand new to the Final Four and they might be starry-eyed, but all four of these teams, Pitt's a little newer to the party, but they were there last year. So all these teams, pretty familiar with this stage. I kind of wish that wasn't the case because Nebraska could then lean on their experience of being there before, but – It should be a tremendous Final Four. I think the ratings will be through the roof. I think moving the finals, Jessica, to ABC on Sunday, probably going to shatter the previous high for a volleyball championship match. i got to imagine being on ABC will do that. Which I believe the record right now is Nebraska-Wisconsin for a championship match. So, um, yeah, putting it on ABC, absolutely. I was having this conversation, though, with someone at the airport about the the two days in between so they're playing thursday and sunday why couldn't it be on abc on saturday, saturday. but apparently there's bowl games all throughout there the are. day so they they couldn't put it so it was the sunday that had to be available for them to be able to be on abc which is good for the sport i i think that's the one thing that probably now that hey this is great and but as we continue to improve and move forward maybe not have the two days in between. I don't know. Maybe we'll see what Coach Cook thinks, but I would think that probably most folks, especially the ones that are traveling here, the fans probably would appreciate one day in between. And um, but absolutely still have the one day in between, but be able to not have to spend the two days here in between the the semifinals and the finals. But hey, it's absolutely huge that they're on ABC. And yeah, those numbers are going to be no matter who it is with these four teams. You know, especially with Wisconsin and Nebraska on the other side of the bracket and Texas. These all of these teams, the the three especially, I'm not sure really what Pitt brings, but the three teams bring great audiences. And so whoever advances from that other side is absolutely going to bring a lot of viewers. And then certainly if Nebraska advances, they're going to bring a lot of viewers. So um, it's there's no doubt it's going to be a record. It's going to be yet another record breaking night day for Nebraska volleyball on Sunday if they make it there for sure. Great for the teams, I think, to have another day. But you're right, for the expenses of fans and that type of thing, that's a whole other night of a hotel and eating out and all those type of things. That gets pricey. Jessica Cudi in Tampa. We need to slip, slip a break in here. Contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. I want to get Jessica's thoughts on a couple of Husker football topics and the Christmas gift that will not happen. We'll get her reaction next. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Welcome to Sue's Frame Shop. Yes, can you frame these, please? Um, these are Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch tickets. I know. Isn't the classic Christmas artwork on them just charming? Now, be sure not to smudge it when you frame them. But if you scratch them and enter non-winning tickets online, you could win up to $20,000. Give me those. Here's a quarter. Let's start scratching. Promotion ends January 3rd, 2024. Top prize odds vary by game. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. 
Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Hey, Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. Deer roads, trails, and rivers. You ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, brought to you by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field, 402-413-2400. I'm here, Jessica Cootie, continuing our NCAA tournament volleyball coverage, brought to you by John Henry. She's down in Tampa. The team left mid-afternoon today. And then the team got to the hotel quickly, but the support staff on a second bus got delayed a bit because of a broken down bus. But the, the Texas Longhorns came to the rescue and picked them up and swooped them over to the, uh, to the hotel earlier. I want to get some thoughts. Uh, the, the music has been turned off in the concourse. Uh, Julian Fleming did visit today. Kyle McCord's visit is over. He left town. He was spotted at the Omaha airport earlier this afternoon. Has not committed on social media. Doesn't mean that he's not going to, but uh, has not done it to this point in time. But, Jessica, I thought equally as important to next season for Husker football was the video that got posted after 9 o'clock last night, about an hour after we got off the air, with Isaac Gifford and Bryce Benhard. What did you think of that, and how big a news do you think that is? First of all, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Um, but huge news, right? I mean, just to be able to have a veteran in um, Isaac Gifford and what he did. I mean, there were several times that – you said it during the broadcast and sometimes during the broadcast, sometimes during the commercial break, uh, Isaac Gifford is the best player on the field or how, how good Isaac Gifford's playing. And he, for as um, much certainly attention and well-deservedly so that the defensive line, Nash, Hutmaker and Ty Robinson got at times. I mean, Isaac Gifford is just, he's the quarterback a lot of times. And I know the, the, the linebackers too, Luke Grimer and Nick Henrich were, but I mean, he's just, he, was flying around. He just does so many good things and you can put him, he can play in so many different spots and move him around. And so, you know, I, I think probably for him, it was more so, I don't know if it was as much about, do I want to go to the NFL as it is about, you know, just how, how many times have we talked about this just with the COVID year and being in college for a long time. And, and, but I, I just, I think he has so much, such love for this place and is really wants to see this thing through and, the fact that he has another year, I think he thinks, you know, just seeing how special it was and, and how great the defense was. And, and he wants to do his part to continue to help build this culture, lay this foundation. And then Bryce Benhart, I mean, gosh, 
a lot of times I, we didn't talk about him at all, which we talked about him so much the year before it was, it was, it was a good thing that we weren't talking about him very much, but he, he was very much improved and was played really well. I mean, how many times did Searles come in and say how he was very complimentary of Bryce Benhart. And so I, just to have a veteran offensive lineman, it's just so big to have guys that have played. And how many starts did he end up having? Where was he on the list? He's tied with the big dog. So he's going to yeah. surpass him now next year. The minute he makes a start next season, the big dog's no longer atop the big heap. <laughs> I mean, you just, you cannot, you cannot understate how valuable that is to have offensive linemen that have made those kinds of starts. So um, I, that is just really big. Big for the program, but also big in terms of those are two key pieces that are coming back for sure. We had DB on last hour, and he said that he might have been the most improved guy on the football team, and I think he might be right. I mean, from from the I was I felt like he made leaps and bounds improvement from the year before where he gave up a lot of sacks. He had some false start penalties. He didn't. He had one or two of those this year, but it was markedly better. Yeah, I mean. You, you can probably make an argument that Nash might be in that that conversation yeah. for most improved guys, but Bryce would certainly be right there, I think. There's no doubt about it. He's got to be in that conversation. There is absolutely no doubt about it. And, you know, it was more so kind of, I think sometimes talking with Searles, a lot of times maybe it was more so on the left side that there were more issues than on the right side. And so, um, yeah, there there's absolutely no question he was – he was very much improved and I just I think it was another year working with coach Rayola learning the system he wasn't even the starter right at the beginning of last season he got moved into that role and so you know just having that that experience I know he was at the end of the season but I don't think he was starting at the beginning of the season and then um you know just just gaining that valuable experience but also having another year working with coach Rayola and I just I just think things started to click for him and he absolutely was a huge part of that offensive line and so how many of them are coming back now? Three? Do we, well, we don't know about Ben Scott yet, right? We don't know totally, but I think Ben is going to come back. I, I think I feel good about him coming back. You basically lose Ethan Piper, who's just, I mean, he's got a, that was a horrendous injury he had there. And Nuri was exhausted his eligibility. I think Turner's planning on coming back. Teddy's back. Justin Evans Jenkins is back. So you've got a really good batch to start with there. And I think Coach Riola is excited about that. We need to work a break in, but in, in the fairness of equal time, I mentioned DB was on last hour. He said he was out shopping the other day, came upon a bag of high chews. He thought about getting it for you, but saw that it was almost five bucks a bag, and he just he couldn't pull the trigger. That has to hurt a little bit to hear that. I mean, apparently I'm not worth a $5 high chew bag, I guess. I don't know. Um, I, I noticed in the chat some of the guys were saying that, but, um, you know, I've got some special things in store for you guys on signing day. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Can't wait. That's called the ultimate tease right there. All right. Need to <laughs> work our, we need to work our last break in. We're back with some final thoughts from Jessica. She's down in Tampa covering the Husker volleyball team. We'll do that next. It's time for another round of Nebraska farm facts. If there's one thing Nebraska is known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, Chiropractic Care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Welcome to Sue's Frame Shop. Yes, can you frame these, please? Um, these are Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch tickets. I know. Isn't the classic Christmas artwork on them just charming? Now, be sure not to smudge it when you frame them. But if you scratch them and enter non-winning tickets online, you could win up to $20,000. 
Give me those. Here's a quarter. Let's start scratching. Promotion ends January 3rd, 2024. Top prize odds vary by game. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker. Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Woodhouse Auto Family, your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Greg Sharp back in our Acres Broadcast Center. Jessica Cootie has made her way to Tampa to cover the final four. Huskers will play the Pitt Panthers Thursday night at six. Pre-game coverage begins at five. Tomorrow is the mandatory open practice where the Huskers get to take the floor for an hour or so and then have the uh, media sessions and then all the prep work they need to do with the networks uh, for the viewing of that. Well, you got a night in Tampa. What's the plan? I'm sure the social media team is ready to hit and attack the streets tonight. I I think I've gotten some text messages, but every time I click off the screen, Cole clicks off, so I can't can't check it up, check on it yet, but... Uh, I literally got to the hotel, ran up to my room, and, and clicked on to try to, to get it on air for, on Sports Nightly for you guys. So I don't know yet. We'll see. But I have a – my hotel room is overlooking the water, oh. so that's great. It'll be great in the morning. I can't wait. You're going to love it. That Bay Area that you're kind of staying at, it's a beautiful area, and you may not come back. I kiddingly told you that <laughs> yesterday. It's just the climate at this time of year down there is perfect. I'm sure you felt hey, that Greg. the minute you walked off the plane. It's a little chilly, but it's way warmer. I mean, it feels like a heat wave compared to what I left. It's funny, Jalen Reyes, he got off the plane. Or I saw him when we got off the plane. He's in flip-flop, short sleeve shirt, shorts. And I said, did you get on the plane like that? He goes, oh, yeah. I always do that, too, when I go back home and, and see my family. So he left Lincoln. It was chilly. Yeah. It was cold because I did not bring a coat. And I was like, I should have brought a coat just to get to the airplane. And he just walked on with his shorts and short sleeve shirt and flip flops. But um, yeah, by the way, you told you told me how good the food was here. I've had like five different people tell me that. So I'll test it out. Very good. Well, I thought we had a call. Carla was calling in. She didn't want to talk to me. She didn't want to talk to you. She wanted to talk to Cole. I don't know what this is about. Oh. Cole, what do we got going on here? We're good. What do you mean it's good? What it was? Why didn't she want to go on the air and talk to Jessica and I? Oh, he's going to tell us later, I guess. Oh. All right. So, how early is practice tomorrow? Can you? Can you, it's not real early, is it? Middle of the day? I think it's like ten or something. Okay. By the way, we're running out of time. What happened to the Christmas teas? Something Christmas. Well, that was about the uh, Damon not buying you the Christmas present. Oh, I see. He thought I about see. getting you high cheese Rude. for Christmas, and then he said, no, it wasn't worth it. It's $4.65 a pack or something like that. So I'll remember that. I'll uh, remember I know, that. right? Let's put that one in the <laughs> vault. Remember that. It's in the vault. Well, good luck on covering tomorrow. Can't wait to hear what you come up with tomorrow night on the program. It should be fun, and I, I think that team's going to be locked and loaded and ready for that Thursday match. I agree for sure. Got got some things lined up, so I'm excited to bring it to you guys tomorrow night. Great. Have a good night, Todd. Jessica down in Tampa covering the Final Four. Our NCAA tournament coverage, again, brought to you by our good friends at John Henry's. Thanks to David and Cole. Cole's holding out on us. Won't tell us what callers are calling in for, but figure that out at a later time. Women's basketball show tomorrow night, hour one. Amy Williams will be in studio, and then Jessica will join me in hour two. We'll have full wall-to-ball coverage of volleyball, and we'll keep you abreast of all the football news. Hopefully there is some tomorrow here on Sports Highly. Have a good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. 
Hey, Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me.